congratulations on the film, this wonderful Thank you. little film. Uh, I couldn't help but, obviously, given the context of the film, remember all of my holidays as a kid in, in caravans and all these discos and tribute acts and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted... It definitely brings it back, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, did it's it do so it for nostalgic. you? Did it kind of bring back memories of when you were a kid going to these, these weird places that your parents would take you to? <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%, definitely. Um, yeah, we went on a lot of family holidays like that as a kid and, you know, Butlins and Pontins and um yeah going to Skegness or Cleethorpes and staying in a caravan and you know doing bingo or you know watching the entertainment getting dressed up for 80s night yeah getting uh, high on sugar on, yeah getting pulled onto the stage for some magician's weird yeah <laughs> something like that yeah it's a it's a crazy Very thing I remember uh, when I was sorry when I was a kid I was just gonna say uh do you remember the Ho Seasons holidays? They had a, like a in the eighties. They had like a jingle, and it was in my head the whole time I was watching this film because it's. Well, how does the jingle go? Uh, it was like, "Hooray, hooray! It's your Ho Seasons holiday." Oh, I don't remember that one. Maybe I'm. How are you? Well, maybe I'm older than you. Maybe it's a it's an eighties thing that only I remember. I don't know. Late eighties. <laughs> I remember the late 80s. <laughs> oh, okay. It was early 80s. Actually, so, <laughs> who knows? Um, but, I mean, there's this wonderful kind of family dynamic in this. So, in terms of making the film, how easy was it for you guys to, to kind of get along? Because it feels like, even though, you know, it's a small independent film, you probably made it quite quite sharpish in, in many ways. That there's a great kind of camaraderie oh, yeah. and real family dynamic between the group of you. Yeah, there wasn't much time for rehearsals and things. So, we just had to sort of get stuck in straight away. But you know it's it's so easy with people like Nell and Joe and and Tabby you know, you know and Sam e everyone was just you know really lovely and and I think it helped that we were all living on the caravan park for the whole for the entirety of filming um because we got to hang out you know after work and have breakfast together dinner together you know I'd go and knock on for Joe and um go around for a cup of tea so we're all neighbours. It's quite nice and really easy to quickly form a sort of family bond. Also, Marley's writing is brilliant and it, a lot of it is in there in the writing and it's just perfect um, to, you know, to start improvising from. And uh, Joe Hartley's like the queen of improv. So that really helps too. Yeah, she seems to, uh, I spoke to her a couple of times actually, and she seems to be quite good at keeping Ricky Gervais on his toes, which I think is quite a good skill considering everything that they do, obviously in Afterlife together. It's quite a good skill yeah. think, to be able to keep up with oh, yeah. Ricky Gervais. <laughs> um, and, uh, forgive me if this is, yeah, forgive me if this is incorrect, but you were actually really pregnant when you were making making the film. So is that a yeah. challenge to, to do that? Because normally you get, all the things kind of added you get the belly and all that kind of stuff but how is it for making a film where you're actually pretty far along um, it was great it was just really good timing and um I'm just pleased that that sort of worked out because when Marley told me about the character and that you know she'd written this this part for me I was super excited but I was sort of oh, I just you know I was three months pregnant and I hadn't told anyone and I was thinking oh, maybe I won't be able to do it because I'm pregnant but then she told you know she dropped the bomb that oh no the character's eight months pregnant so it just was meant to be it was brilliant um yeah and it's um you know it's actually a lot easier than having a big fake bump strapped to you because I've done that as well and it's actually really uncomfortable so <laughs> being actually pregnant was you know, no continuity problems. It was just the bumps always there and it's always in the right place. <laughs> um, and obviously I could draw on my experience to sort of make this ridiculous character as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to ask you about working with, with Nell because she's, she's extraordinary in the, in the film. Uh, and for someone so young and so kind of early in her career, she really has a, an amazing presence and really brings kind of AJ's story to, to life. What was it like working with her given that she was... You know, this is one of her very first kind of kind of roles out the gate. Uh, honestly, I, I was just blown away by her performance and her um, how sort of um, professional she was and how dedicated she was. She's always learning lines and wanting to sort of, you know, go over the script and have a little improv jam. And she just really dedicated herself to it and it really shows. And she's just super talented, isn't she? She's just got 
something really special. Um, I can't wait to see her in whatever she she does next. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's coming out uh, when the film comes out. I think this this week is when uh, everybody's talking about Jamie comes out. This comes out next week, and there's like a, you know, you're kind of following each other in terms of these films about acceptance and and being who you are, yeah. embracing life and everything else. How how important, especially in you know 2021, that these stories continue to be to be told and, and kind of embraced for you know people being themselves. Oh, I, I don't think there's anything more important. I I, I think it's wonderful that we can tell these stories and that independent film exists so that we can we can do that and um yeah stories like AJ's are out there and you know to see a lesbian character at the front at the you know at, at the forefront of her own film and she gets a happy ending is actually really rare and something that should be really celebrated yeah absolutely um before you go I would be remiss in my duties as uh, as someone that works for an entertainment website, if I didn't ask you about that little <laughs> independent project you had earlier in the year, um, which I wish you congratulations on because it's it's you are fantastic in that show. Have you okay. absorbed the kind of the way that Sylvia has been embraced by fans across the world? Because I can't turn on social media without seeing your face and doing all the people drawing photos of you. You and Tom Hiddleston doing these things, taking lines from what you said in the show and making them into art and, you know, TikToks and all this kind of stuff. Have you have you kind of absorbed all of that or is it still a bit of a bit of a whirlwind? It's still a whirlwind, to be honest, because it's still going, it's still happening. And um, it but, you know, I I do try and engage and and and, and look at the art that people are making. And obviously, I, I'm just super grateful that people connected with it and like the character and you know it's inspired so much art and so much conversation and um yeah so I'm I'm obviously super happy with it but it is still quite overwhelming and um <laughs> surreal yeah. did you know <laughs> and obviously not, not to just finally before I let you go this is I won't spoil anything obviously but the way the show goes and where it ends up and obviously now they've obviously announced it's going to be a season two were you aware beforehand of what the connotations of what happens towards the end meant for the bigger picture because fans have just gone mental and there's been people have sort of said oh there's surprises coming and then no surprises have happened in the other shows and then in Loki it's like oh here is all of all of this did you get a sense of what that meant or were you just like I'm just playing my character and they can worry about all the I rest of it afterwards <laughs> well yeah that really I mean I had a, a slight sense of what it meant but um I don't think I quite realised the magnitude of it. And I still don't. I still don't really understand what it means for the whole franchise. I guess we all just have to wait and see. Yeah, I would say at least you're not in Andrew Garfield's shoes because I feel sorry for him in a way because he's getting asked about, you know, himself left, right and centre and he has to, he has to but yeah, you know, just sort of be like, I can't say anything even if I could want to. At least you, got, you can yeah. kind of talk about it now. It's a strange thing. Yeah, I can talk about what's happened, but I honestly, I don't know what's coming. So it's, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll all just have to wait and see. Crazy. I'm sure Tom Exciting. does. Exciting. Do you Tom. think? Maybe, maybe. I think. I, I don't think he does. Oh, really? Honestly, they, they, honestly, they are, they're so good at keeping secrets, even, even with us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we all thought Tom was dead let's be honest we were all like hey he's dead and then yeah that's later, happened like, oh, a few times there he is <laughs> there you are yeah <laughs> excuse me well congratulations on that anyway but I wish you all the best with with Sweetheart it's a, it's a really wonderful film really really enjoyed it and uh, yeah I hope uh, hope it goes really well for you thank you so much for your time thanks Scott thank you Pleasure. nice to meet you ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!